Praise the Lord. This is the 685th epistle. And today we are starting the Zacchaeus series. Let us pray. Gracious God, whose name is Jesus Christ. Bible says you are the bishop of our soul. The true shepherd is who you are. You lay your, down, your life down for us. You were rejected so that we will be accepted. The entrance of thy word bringeth light. I pray that the light of Jesus Christ will shine in our lives. As we go through the Zacchaeus series, reveal yourself to us, gracious Father. Bless our hearts. Bless our minds. Bless our souls. And transform us at the renewing of our minds in the name of Jesus. I take charge of the atmospheres and environments through which this message is being sent. The airwaves, the bandwidths, the phones, the computers, and various screens. That it will make way by the hand of the Lord that everyone that hears it will not be hindered but will receive it in good faith in the name of Jesus. The hearts of men are in your hands. And I pray that in these last days, O God, as your message comes, like Bible says, the heart of men shall be willing. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Today we are looking at our lesson, the Zacchaeus series, the first of which I have named the original. Purporting and meaning to say, come back to the original. So when you look at the cover page, or the picture at the front, you will see a fresh grape and a rotting grape. Something has happened. Some conditions have come in. And the original state of that beautiful grape that everybody would love to eat is destroyed. And so it is unwholesome for the body and unpleasant for the tongue. God have mercy. Most of us have become like this, unwholesome for the purposes of God and unpleasant for the ministry and the body of Christ. Let's read our scripture. It is found in the book of Luke, verse 19, 1 to 10. But today we will focus on the verse 2, but I will start from the verse 1 to 2. Then Jesus, the heading says, Jesus comes to Zacchaeus' house and may the Lord Jesus come to your house. We'll get that interpretation later. Then Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. Now the scripture. Now there was a man named Zacchaeus who was a chief tax collector. The Amplified says he was a superintendent and he was rich. Amen. Behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus and the chief among the publicans, and he was rich from the King James Version. Now, there are two points I say that we derive from verse 2 of Luke 19. In beholding Luke 19, we see a rich chief publican and a man named Zacchaeus. That will be the import of our lesson. To behold means come to the realization that your eyes may be open to see. Look at that man. As Bible qualifies him, called Zacchaeus, yet rich and a chief publican. Let me give you the background of the tax collector in the olden days. Research says, and my senior pastor educated me, that in the olden days, the tax system was like this. The Romans would say that all the area in, say, Kanishi or Bronx or Mantova, or um, Wuhan, they will allocate it to a superintendent who now is Zacchaeus. And the Roman uh, lords will say, I require, say, $10,000 or 10,000 CDs from the households in this neighborhood. Then the chief superintendent will argue or bargain with the tax uh, authorities who are the Roman government. And then come to a conclusion let's say they reach at ten thousand but the practice was that when they come to the locality bronx kanishi uh, wuhan uh, mantova wherever 
they will exact from the people. They will take more than required from the household. Ordinary, the 10,000 should be divided among the households. But the tax collector's practice was that they took more. And the excess of whatever 10,000 that they got were their possession. You realize that at the end of the entire version, before we get to the verse 10, Zacchaeus will say, if I have robbed anybody, I give back. So, the system was such that it gave the lean way to these tax collectors to enrich themselves at the expense of the settlement. Now, let's go back. The man named Zacchaeus, we found out that the meaning of the name Zacchaeus is pure, innocent. I like to elaborate further, say genuine, good, and holy. So it means that by the intent of God, and Bible says that even when we were clothed of blood in our mother's womb, the Lord knew us and he knew us and he called us by our name. So the original plan of God for Zacchaeus' life was that he would be pure. He will be a genuine man. He will be a man of integrity. Just like in the garden, prior to the event of the serpent, the deceiver, Satan, man was created in the image of God to be pure, holy, and without sin. But the advent of another uh, uh, introduction, the advent of a system, the advent of another mindset or another thought brought about brought about what the tinting of the original the blackening of the white seemed to overtake righteousness when you read ecclesiastes it says that god has made man perfect but we have taken up many schemes so zacchaeus in the mind of god was made perfect just like you and me zacchaeus in the mind of god was made righteous holy Somebody made for the pleasure of the Lord. The psalmist says, I am fearful and wonderfully made. And the apostle said, if I live, I live for you. If I die, I die for you. So whatever you are and whoever you are, you are like Zacchaeus at birth, giving the name pure. Every Christian is born in Christ with, with that mind of God to bring you back. So he calls you a chosen generation, no more belonging to the past, a peculiar people, a royal holy nation. That is the intent of God for creating us. That is how God made you and me pure and holy. That is the revelation I get from the name Zacchaeus. And Bible says that he was the chief among the tax collectors, chief among the frosters. Look, by the influx of the Roman system into, into the Jewish land, the life of Zacchaeus was corrupted. Many of us have been corrupted by the policies of this world, by the kind of way work goes on in our offices. They call something affairs, but in actual fact, it's duping people of their money. Oh, don't worry. That is the trend of today. If you are in a relationship, sex is normal. No. Last time I put a prayer topic on my, on my Facebook wall and I prayed it unto God. I said, God, have mercy on everyone who have accepted the excesses and the follies of this world as normal. When it is normal with man, it does not mean that it is normal with God. Zacchaeus had grown to accept the system of the Roman system. Your Roman system may be drinking. Your Roman system may be defrauding people. Your Roman system may be bullying people. Your Roman system may be what you are doing and you know that is not right with the Lord, but you keep doing. But I'm praying for you today that there shall be a turn around. So the call today is to come back to the original. Now the whole lesson in verse 2 is this. God has made us pure and God has made us holy. But we have allowed the world the pleasures of sin, the excesses of life to contaminate us. Bible says in Revelations, there are yet a few who have not stained their garment of righteousness. It means that there are yet many who have accepted the ways of the world and have become sinful. 
priding ourselves in evil politics, in rituals, priding ourselves in extramarital affairs, unfaithfulness, priding ourselves in lies. So in some places when you go, bribery has become legalized. But I'm praying for you, child of God, that your eye will be open for the entrance of the word of God bringeth light. Your eye will be open to these dark and evil practices. And like Zacchaeus, you will come to the true meaning of your name, the child of God, away from sin, separated and consecrated for the Lord and for meat for his use. So when you read Revelation chapter 2 verses 4, he says that Let's read the Revelations chapter 2, verses 4, the verse 4 and the verse 5. Here, nevertheless, I have this against you, that you have left your first love. Let's go back. So we see God being pleased with the people and later God not being pleased with them because of what they did. So he says, God says, I know your works, your labor, your patience, that you cannot bear those who are evil. And you have tested those who say they are apostles and are not, and have found them liars. And you have preserved and have, you have persevered and have patience and have labored in my name's sake and have not become weary. Nevertheless, I have this against you. That you have left your first love. You began well. You used to be audacious, on fire for the Lord. But as we speak now, the systems of the world, the influx of an old prophet have defiled your system. And God have mercy on you. Today, as I end this Zacchaeus series number one, the 685th episode of Renewal series, I am calling you, that like the prodigal son, I command you by the Spirit of God, come back to your first love. Come back to trueness. Come back to Jesus. Come back to salvation. Come back to purity. Come back to righteousness. And come back to friendship and koinonia, fellowship with the Lord. The Lord bless you. And I pray that this message will touch your heart. I have so much to say, but I want to limit it. I want to limit it so that you, you have time to pray over it yourself pray with me i thank you jesus for my life and i accept that i have gone away i have stayed on the the broad way instead of the narrow way and by my strength i cannot return so i reach out my hand and i say heavenly father save me and i pray that you will give me the strength by the holy spirit to come back to my first love where the lord will be proud to call me his own as he did in the life of Job. If you don't know, in Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. If you don't know the Lord, I'm giving you the opportunity. Just a second. With the, with the mouth we confess and with the heart we believe unto salvation. Say, Lord Jesus, I hand over my life to you. I accept you as Lord and Savior. I forsake all my sins and evil ways. Be the Lord and shepherd over my life. I hand over myself totally to you. Thank you in Jesus' name. God bless you. You have been saved. Join a Bible, believing church, read your Bible, seek the Lord for yourself, and He will reveal Himself to you. You can reach out to me on any of my platforms if you want to talk about salvation and how to walk the work of Christ. And trust me, the Lord will bless you. Now let's pray. The Lord shine his face upon you. The promise of Malachi 4, 1 and 2 be your portion. The coming of the Messiah, bringing healing on the wings of the rising sun should be your portion. I, re I resist every evil and negative thing that pursues you and is domiciled in your life. And from today, be free by the power of the Lord in Jesus' name. Subscribe, share, let us fellowship together. In the love of the Lord. My name is Minister Frederick Ahim. I am the pastor's apprentice. The Lord bless you. And I serve the Most High God. None else but Jesus Christ. The risen King. Amen.